Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Being the Odds. It is Tuesday, May 14th, 2024, and we are back with our best bets of the day. If you're new to the channel, my name is Zach, and welcome to Being the Odds. Hit that subscribe button, like this video, hit the notification bell so you never miss a pick. We post these bet bet videos every single day, and we're going after our first 15,000 subscribers. So I'm really excited to have you all here. Let's go win together today. Let's go make some money. So to recap yesterday's results, we had a back-to-back -back great day. Went 9-4 two days ago, 9-3 today, eight, or 9-3 yesterday, excuse me, 18-7 run. Uh, members only best bet smacked last night. Oklahoma City money line, biggest bet of the day. Huge winner, sweaty winner, but a winner nonetheless. And that shit, by the way, last night, Oklahoma City showed they got some fucking balls. Like that going into Dallas, being down basically the entire game, finishing out so well. I mean, that was a big moment for this Oklahoma City team. Uh, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised they won this series. Over eight and a half, Oakland and Houston. Uh, sweaty, but a win nonetheless. We got that in the bottom of the eighth. We should have gotten that way earlier because Oakland left so many guys on base, but we'll take the win anyway. Uh, D backs first five, minus 0 0.5, winner. Um, Avs money line, didn't really see much of that game, that was a loss. Uh, Cavs plus eight and a half without Donovan Mitchell. For those guys in the comments telling me Donovan Mitchell was out, you guys told me after he was ruled out, so I couldn't really do much about it, but we still covered. Karis Levert, thank you for the most inconsequential shot of all time and to cut the lead from 9.7 points with two seconds left. Love this. Thank you, Karis Levert. And as we say all the time, right, good teams win, great teams cover. Uh, we got to win there. Under 215 and a half, Oklahoma State and Dallas, easy winner, only 196 points scored. Padres minus one half was brutal. Um, over eight and a half, Cleveland, Texas. I mean, Texas lost so many people on base. Cleveland had so many people on base. It was ridiculous. But even so, uh, we still ended up having a good day. No runs first inning. KC and Seattle win. Orioles first five minus 0 0.5 win. Um, really tight, but a win nonetheless. Uh, under five and a half, Carolina, New York. That was a win. And don't look now. Hurricanes money line, that was a win. And if they're going back to Carolina, if they win that one, all the pressure is squarely on the Rangers. This would be an all-time New York sports um, meltdown, which I am all I am all the way here for. I love watching New York teams just spiral out of, <laughs> spiral out of control. 9-3 uh, yesterday, we had winning days in literally every sport. Uh, that improves all of our records like, like crazy. NBA, 352 and 284. 98 and 62 on best bets, ripping through the NBA season. NHL 299 and 218, having a great season so far. 62 and 47 on best bets. 123 and 98 in the MLB, 38 and 28 on best bets. We're, pro we're as, as profitable as you are in every single sport. When you combine them all together, we're, <laughs> life's pretty fucking good. Let me put it that way. Um, and we have eight picks for you guys today on the channel. Let's jump into them now. I'm going to start with our first place with the over 216 and a half in Indiana and New York. Um, I think the Knicks are going to bounce back offensively today and just not look pathetic. I'm not saying they're even going to be good. They just aren't going to look pathetic. Because if they were even sort of okay, they were just average on the offensive end last game. That game goes over. It was I had that we had that 221 and a half. They're going to play better today. Pacers have a fantastic offense. Uh, and when the Knicks being home means their role players are going to shoot better. Um, and also the matchups are nice for this game. Um, you know, Haverstein's going to have to guard um, Miles Turner, obviously. But OG's probably not playing. The dude hasn't even been running. He's been doing basically pool work the entire time. Can't even run right now. So OG's probably out. Big deal for the Knicks, given the fact that he's like their best defensive stopper. And he usually guards Pascal Siakam. So I don't really know who you put on Pascal Siakam if you're, if you're the Knicks. I don't really see it. Plus, if you pull Miles Turner out on the, in the perimeter and you have to have her sign out, then you can dump it down to dump down to Siakam. He's going to go against a much smaller player. Um, they don't really have much of an answer for Halliburton at all. I mean, even Chen's doing the best job he can, but I mean, he's been playing very well, not scoring a lot, but, but, but playing very well. Um, on top of that, you know, the role players for Indiana have looked very, very good. They shoot the ball incredibly well on top. And then if you look at their Knicks side of things, Jalen Brunson has yesterday, last game, Jalen Brunson had a bad game for sure, but Normally, there's not really someone to guard him on the on the Pacers. Um, Devin Chen has been hot. Josh Hart's been hot. Uh, shooting anyway. Again, last game, not talking about that. I'm saying just in general for the series, in general for the playoffs, they've been playing well. I think this game goes over. I like Indiana and in, um, in the and the Knicks over two sixteen and a half. Um, um, in, in this game, 
Next one will be over 205 and a half in Minnesota and Denver. I think this game goes over because there's just way too much offensive talent on both sides. And one thing Denver's done since getting back into this series, they've turned this into a skill series versus a like gritty toughness series. Because if they were to go to a gritty toughness series, I mean, Minnesota's going to win that thing all day long. But they've turned it into a skill series. And if you've watched Joker, what he's been doing is, as you guys have been watching him, is that he's been stopping about four feet, five feet off the basket in the lane, just shooting a little floater over Gobert where he can't touch the ball. On top of that, it seems like Jamal Murray has, hasn't solved Jaden McGinnis, but like he's been able to be a lot more effective. Um, Aaron Gordon or and Michael Porter Jr., one of them always st had stepped up the last two games. So I see them having good, one of them having good games, if not both. And then if you look at um, Minnesota, they still don't have any answer for Anthony Edwards whatsoever. I mean, zero. Carl Anthony Towns cannot play remotely as bad as he played last game. I mean, he looked like he said a, he had a quote a couple days ago when they were up 2 0, and they said, they say it's a big three with me, Gobert, and Ant. It's like, bro, no, 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 no. There is no big three in Minnesota. There is a big one. His name is Anthony Edwards, and that's it. Um, but last game is why. I mean, when you have a, when you're when you're like one for eleven in the middle of the third quarter while getting blown out, you're not part of a big three doing that. And Carl Anthony Towns hasn't been a member of a big three or even been skilled enough to be a member of big three for a very very long time. He has not been that guy for a long time. But even so, he's still he's still skilled. He can still shoot and he can still score, and he won't play nearly as bad as he did last game. On top of that, um, on, on top of that, they have. I mean, Jaden McDaniels has shown that he can score. Um, same thing with the Keel Alexander Walker. Nas Reed has shown that in this building, he he can be very effective offensively. And the number to me is just too low. I understand that they're letting the guys play, which, by the way, is such a better brand of basketball. Let me know in the comments if you guys like it. But I fucking love how much they're letting the guys play here at, 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 in, in the playoffs right now. But we're going to go with the over 205 and a half Minnesota and Denver. Next, you're going with the Phillies. First five, minus 0 0.5 versus the Mets. I like Nola over Obuto. I don't want to give the bullpen any reason to affect this game whatsoever because the Phillies' bullpen is dog water. It's dog shit. Um, they're one of the worst bullpens in the entire league, while the Mets actually are really, really solid and the third best bullpen. So we want to eliminate that completely. And to me, I like the Phillies' lineup so much better than the Mets. The Mets have like a very high price, <laughs> have a very high price lineup, but they're not very good. And the Phillies found something late last night offensively in the batter's box. I think that momentum is going to continue at least in the first half of this game. I'm rolling the Phillies here, first five minus 0 0.5 versus the Mets. Next, we're going to go with the no runs first inning in Detroit and Miami. Uh, Detroit's uh, putting Olsen on the mound. He's been very, very good this entire year. Um, Weathers is the best pitcher the Marlins have, which isn't saying much, but he is the best one they have. He only has a 4-2-4 ERA, so he's average, not good or great. Uh, both these teams are lackluster offensively, don't have a lot of offensive talent. And they mostly start slow in games, especially against pretty good pitching. And Detroit isn't a hitter's park whatsoever. So when you add all those things together, I like that it being a three up, three down on both sides here. So we're going to no runs first in Detroit, Miami. Next, we're going to the Orioles, minus 1.5 uh, versus the Blue Jays. I think the Orioles bounce back, and I think they bounce back hard today, especially playing at home. Uh, Bradish is a lot better than Bassett, in my opinion. Uh, Bradish hasn't had too many starts this year. He's 0-0 he's he's with a 196 ERA. But last year, he was also very, very good. So I'm going to really look at last year to kind of determine how he's been doing. Bassett this year has been playing like dog shit. has a five-something ERA. Looks, honestly, doesn't look good at all. And the Orioles' bullpen is substantially better than the Jays' bullpen. And what I said yesterday, I said yesterday, yeah, like well, yesterday's game was going to be weird in the sense that the bullpen, I think, were going to flip roles because of how many guys the Orioles had to play on the last game against the Diamondbacks. Today, they're all going to be arrested. So the regular Orioles guys are going to be in. And the Orioles, Orioles, um, even with a bad game yesterday from the bullpen, they still are like the eighth best um, bullpen in the league. And I think they're really more of a top five bullpen. On top of that, the Orioles lineup is substantially better than the Jays lineup just from production alone. The Jays have bigger names, but the Orioles have better production overall this season. You guys can watch it. You guys can see it. Um, and the Orioles are also going to be at home coming off a loss. I think they bounce back well today. I think they win this game pretty convincingly. I'm rolling the Orioles here minus 1.5. Plus, I can get some plus money odds on that, which is nice. Um, next, we're going to go with the Padres minus 1.5. Versus the Rockies, very similar to the Orioles in the sense that they're going to bounce back against a shitty team. Blue Jays aren't shitty, but the Rockies definitely are. And you, and we should have honestly seen a letdown coming yesterday because the Padres are coming off playing the Dodgers, which for them is like basically the biggest their biggest series of the year. Um, and Cease to me is way better than Cal Quantrill. I think I think Dylan Cease. I think I'm, I'm, I know I didn't get his first name right, but Cease is one of the more underrated pitchers in the entire league. Uh, he was re he was a bright spot for the White Sox last year. I'm really happy he actually got on a team that's actually good and could contend a little bit. While Quantrill has played play 
played better this year, but he's not a very good pitcher. I saw what he did last year, and this year he's played a little bit better, but that won't last for very long. San Diego's lineup is substantially better if you go down one through nine. They're just substantially better in every single way than the Rockies. And, the, and on top of that, the bullpen is better for San Diego. Colorado's one of the worst bullpens in the league, while San Diego's league average. That's a big difference. And yesterday, and again, the San Diego is at home. This is the place where I see them bouncing back. I'm rolling the Padres here, minus 1.5 versus um, the Rockies. Don't love the odds on, it's like minus 125, but I think they can win by two or more. And next, we're going to the under five and a half in Boston and Florida. Um, this game, like I said in the last game, I think it's going to be very, I think it's going to mirror game five in the sense that the, the both these teams, Boston is fighting for their life and Florida is looking to close it out at home. I think the defensive intensity is going to be through the roof. And both these goalies are good. And honestly, if you take out, if you get an actual goalie interference penalty, which absolutely should have been there for that second goal for the for the Panthers, um, then this game is going two two in overtime, and um, you know it's a no sweat under five and a half. I think that, I think that I think yeah I think game five is more of what this series really will be. I think that Florida probably I don't know I don't really like the I don't really know I don't like the money lines on either or like the spreads on either, but I like the under five and a half here. I think it's going to be a really intense defensive game. And then we're going to go over six and a half in Edmonton and Vancouver. Uh, this game, this series has been over series the entire time. They've been over teams this entire year. I don't understand how I'm getting such good odds of my over six and a half here for the, for Edmonton and Vancouver, but I'm going to get it. So I'm going to roll the over six and a half. They have weight. They have so much offensive talent. The defense is lack. I'm rolling the over six and a half Edmonton and Vancouver in this game. Now, just so you all know, on top of the four plays, on, on top of the eight plays we gave you, we have four members only best bets today. You can go to ZDMBets.com slash picks. The website is linked in the comments below. As a member, you get all our members-only plays every single day, which most profitable best bets on a day-to-day -day basis. On top of that, you do have a direct line to me. So any game you're considering betting, reach out to our hotline number, get a guaranteed response back about any game you're considering betting. And you get all our free picks to on YouTube since you before these videos come out. That will take advantage of early lines, early odds. Get the website zdmbets.com slash picks, zdmbets.com slash picks, zdmbets.com slash picks. So guys, let's go lock in those picks. Let's go win together today. Let's go make some money. I'll see you all tomorrow.